In this session, we would be continuing with the Tibetan Plateau. We have already talked about various uh, topics in climatology and we have seen that Tibetan Plateau plays an important role in the climate of the region, mainly the Asian, uh, Asian region and the monsoon of Asia. Now, Tibetan Plateau is also known as the roof of the world. We are first trying to understand the importance of Tibetan Plateau. We will then move forward with its role in climate change and uh, impact in monsoons. So, it has been right, rightly called as roof of the world. Now, if you see at the physiography of the region, you have Tibetan Plateau surrounded by Himalayas on the southern edges and the Kunlun mountain ranges on the northern edges. The western extent is around 6, 600 kilometers as compared to the eastern extent of around 1000 kilometers. The width is assumed to be around 2000 kilometers. And most interestingly, the height of the Tibetan plateau which plays a significant role is around 4000 to 4500. Now, at this height, you have such an extensive landmass and it's one of its kind because it's considered as the highest and the biggest source of ice sheet. Now, because of the extensive nature and the surface which is plateau, this huge land mass plays a very important role in the monsoon of the, uh, of the uh, Asian subcontinent or the, I could say the Indian subcontinent. Again, besides the monsoon, it also plays an important role in the uh, physiography of the nearby regions because this region is the main source of river drainage. Now, as you can see in the next picture here, you have the Tibetan plateau that can be seen here and most of the rivers which originate in northern India have its origin in the Tibetan plateau. So, you have Indus, Satluj, Ganga, Yamna, then you have the rivers that flow into Vietnam and Laos. Most of the rivers have its origin in Tibetan Plateau. Therefore, Tibetan Plateau accounts for an uh, important uh, source of water for the Indian subcontinent. Now, this region consists of around uh, an area of 25 lakh square kilometer. Of this area, around 40,000 square kilometers is under Himalayan and the Karakoram ranges that you can see here. Besides this, this whole plateau, which is the major source of glacier for the nearby regions, provides subsid uh, subsistence to nearly 1.5 billion population of Asia, of Southeast Asia I could say. So, you have India, Burma, Laos, Cambodia, Bangladesh, Vietnam. So, these are the countries which depend on the waters that come out from the Tibetan plateau. And again, as you see, you have around 6 to 45 percent increase in the flow of water during the past years. Now, what is the major role of Tibetan Plateau and how over the years the problems related to Tibetan Plateau has increased. Now, if we talk about the intensifying meteorological conditions that are present here, we can say the recent floods of 2010 that occurred in Pakistan and parts of Kashmir could be attributed to the melting of the glaciers from the Tibetan Plateau. That's one of the important things we try to understand under the climatic change of the region. Then this Tibetan plateau plays an important role in intensifying the monsoon conditions in India. Now let's understand how it intensifies the monsoon conditions. When we talk about intensifying the monsoon conditions, what is happening here is there are three things we need to understand about this region. First is the remoteness. So, this plateau region is remote. It has harsh conditions and lastly high altitude. 
so high altitude of this region provides or makes this region as a high level heat source so this region becomes a high level heat source since it becomes a heat source it acts like a uh, it acts as a heating plate and since it acts as a heating plate what it is doing is it is creating or uh, pushing air or air is dispersing into the upper atmosphere and since it is at a uh, considerable height it creates a lot of impact on the troposphere again as i said it is an extensive land mass at such a height which is present so it has a crucial role and it is also known as the third pole because of the certain conditions that we studied here and these conditions make it the third pole or it creates significant impact on the upper troposphere so what happens here is heating of this tibetan plateau leads to warm air that is dispersed in the upper troposphere and this upper troposphere above the tibetan plateau would be a region of high pressure since the region above the tibetan plateau would become a region of high pressure it would create anti cyclonic conditions or i could say it would give rise to anti cyclogenesis in this region this region once it has a high pressure what would happen is winds would start moving away from it and during the monsoon months mainly from the month of may to september you have the tropical westerlies the subtropical westerlies that blows and it bifurcates into two streams so you have one stream that is towards the north of the tibetan plateau and that northward shift is attributed to the heating of the tibetan plateau once the tibetan plateau gets uh, significantly hot it creates a significant land and ocean temperature difference and this land and ocean temperature difference leads to pressure gradient eventually this pressure gradient is responsible for the monsoonal winds or i could say the southwest monsoons to occur so you have the kolkata bangalore axis i could say along that axis you have movement of wind and these movement of wind would lead to southwest monsoons in india now however this region becomes a heat source during the months of summers but what happens during winter during winters it is a region which is extremely cold and it does not affect the monsoonal activities during the winter months the second important criteria that we need to understand for the tibetan plateau is the physiography since it is located at such a height what is happening is it creates a physiographic divide or barrier for the uh, upper jet streams to flow so jet streams we would be discussing in more details in the further session for now to understand it's important to see that since it is at a certain elevation or height it would act as a barrier for the jet stream to flow and therefore the jet stream would bifurcate into two that's towards the north of the tibetan plateau and towards the south of the tibetan plateau and eventually during the uh, during the winter months from october onwards you would have a retreat that is the uh, su uh, subtropical easterly jet stream that would blow in the opposite direction and that would create a opposite gradient to the existing jet stream that is there this whole process is thermodynamically induced or i could say uh, it is created by temperature differences that occur in this region now next is understanding the climatic change of the region so before that there was a monix that was one of the famous expeditions that took place where four russian and two indian uh, ships were released and they were trying to assess the monsoon conditions of india and during this process they felt that tibetan plateau plays an important role but during the recent years what is happening the tibetan region is getting more wet 
it is getting much hotter and much more polluted as compared to the previous time so this is an example of the gangotri glacier so this was the boundary line for gangotri glacier during 1780s and this has receded to to, to this by 2010 2001 that means there has been certain decline in the glaciers uh, glacier formations that occur in the tibetan plateau that is because the weather is becoming much more hotter because the weather is becoming much more hotter what would happen there would be increase in the glacial melt this increase in the glacial melt would lead to more surface runoff or i could say increase in the water level once there is rise in the water level it would create problems for unsafe drinking water and increase in diseases caused by unsafe drinking water like cholera typhoid and so on so all these eventually are a result of the climatic change phenomena that is taking place in the tibetan region so as you can see tibetan plateau plays a very major role in the uh, physiography as well as the climate of india again there are few things we need to understand for the tibetan plateau now if i talk about albedo albedo is the amount of whiteness i could say so dark object reflect less while while light objects reflect more so what would happen the albedo for uh, the forest or the oceans would be less as compared to snow now tibetan plateau is a huge mass of snow or ice and therefore would have higher albedo as compared to the surrounding areas since this albedo would be higher there would be more reflectance however due to the greenhouse gases there have been long wave radiations that are coming out and that has increased the temperature of the region over the times again since it is based at a certain height what is happening is it receives more sunlight as re relative to the uh, surrounding areas as a result it gets more heat so it becomes a high level heat source as we discussed now since it becomes a high level heat source with high albedo what would happen here is this would be a region which would have a uh, much higher sensible heat transfer and again the latent heat of condensation would be higher and this latent heat of condensation would lead to formation of orogra orographically induced cumulus clouds and those would eventually be responsible for the monsoon in the indian subcontinent again again this region you would have uh, lesser absorption because you would have more uh, radiance that would be going out and then again there would be conduction so conduction would be less because conduction would be only possible in the region which is physically touching the lower levels and since you have a uh, uh, light air that is moving in this region you would have lesser conduction in this region so these are again some important phenomena that we need to know about the tibetan plateau finally moving on to the latest developments that we know, need to know with regards to tibetan plateau because tibetan plateau has been a major topic for most of the competitive exams these days so some of the recent developments that we need to know about tibetan plateau is uh, the tibetan plateau over the time period it's assumed that the level is rising for the tibetan plateau it has been due to the collision of the tectonic plates from the uh, moving from india and asia so you have the level of tibetan plateau that's rising that's the first thing the next thing is the china meteorological department and the uh, national natural science foundation has done numerous researches on the region around in and around tibet and they have put on numerous temperature and moisture sensors around the region again there has been a 32 meter tower that has been put up in this region and the aim of this tower is to measure the cloud properties and the cloud characteristics in the region of tibet these sensors also are governed by the weather balloons and the uh, unmanned aerial vehicles in the recent years now the climate is such a phenomena that is highly erratic and unpredictable we say on an average in every 10 years you have uh, every fourth year which would be erratic or so 
So again that erratic nature of the monsoon is hard to predict and therefore understanding the monsoonal characteristics with means of Tibetan plateau is becoming more and more difficult. As we said it is a region which feeds most of the rivers and with the rise in the temperature and global warming that is taking place the melting of glaciers has increased eventually leading to rise of the sea level. Again there has been certain measures that we need to take place in order to curb or mitigate these problems which are occurring in the Tibetan plateau. China on the other hand has put a ban of I could say 40 to 45 percent reduction in carbon dioxide emissions. It has moved on forward with the wind and the hydroelectricity power, the HEP power. Again there has been an anti-smog plan that has been introduced by the government of China. This aims to bring down uh, the amount of smog from 67 percent to 62 uh, percent by 2017. Uh, that has been a recent plan that has been introduced. This, these are some of the measures that have been ch taken by China. On the other hand, in India itself, if we look very closely, you have the water leakage that accounts for 40 to 45 percent of the water pipeline. So, most of the pipelines that you see around 40 to 45 percent would have problems related to water leakage. And that is another cause of concern that needs to be addressed. This phenomena also affects the monsoon of the region. As a result, there have been changes in the practices. So you have the double monsoon rice practice that has been taken place in most parts of India and Cambodia. You have short varieties of vegetation that have been growing up. Uh, all these are aiming to uh, mitigate the problems related to the climate change and to uh, and as a measure to protect the climate of the region. So these were some of the major things that we have discussed regarding uh, Tibetan plateau and the latest developments in the field of Tibetan plateau. In the next session we would be talking about fronts, jet streams and monsoons. When we would be covering jet streams, we would be jet streams and monsoons, we would be again touching Tibetan plateau in brief. So, uh, in brief we can say none of the topics in climatology could be covered without understanding the importance and the role of Tibetan plateau. Uh, we would be covering more topics uh, related to climatology and furthermore in geography in the further sessions. You can subscribe to our channel for any further updates. Have a good day ahead.